So the first, I'd say, easy 15 minutes of today is just going to be uh, some brief introductions, um, talk about what we're doing. I don't want to, because we're limited on time. If this is going to be uh, just a short number of weeks, uh, we're not going to be able to go into the depth that we would otherwise go into. Uh, but still, uh, we will cover all of the content that I teach where I'm at now. So I'll start briefly. Uh, if you've clicked on the link and you've registered, you've already gone to the website that you can see. Uh, this is my personal website, uh, but it simply explains what I am briefly or who I am uh, as far as a professional, uh, that I'm an assistant professor at Florida Southern College, which is located here in Central Florida. So at my website, anyone's really bored and you wanna go view a uh, sample lecture from when I was at UCF, feel free. Uh, but where the purpose of this website for you is to click on Python Bootcamp. Um, all of you, if you're here listening, you've already done this. And in theory, notice the in theory, because we know that students, uh, college students don't often read. I cannot imagine teaching other than college students. I am, uh, there's certainly maybe even less reading and less attention. And so when you click on this link, you will uh, see descriptions of the course. Specifically, uh, it says this PDF as far as the additional rules or the schedule. There's not really rules. Uh, this is not a graded course. It's not for credit. You're here in theory because you like to learn uh, programming. So when you click on the PDF, uh, which I think many did not do, you'll see uh, that we have basically a seven week schedule talking about what we plan on covering. So this is just for you and for your reference to be able to see where we are during that schedule and things you know, are likely to change and evolve as we go on through the weeks. But what I'd like to do is to first make sure uh, that we understand the functionality of the product that we're using, which is Zoom. So Zoom uh, and even Slack. So first I'm gonna start by going to Slack. And this is, I like how I saw one of the participants say uh, that this is literally like Discord um, except more formal. Uh, I've never used Discord. I know a lot of the youth uh, are using Discord. So absolutely, Slack is a product that is used in professional circles. Uh, you'll go and you, so, so the large tech companies, this is how uh, the product that they'll use for instant messaging uh, with one another. And so if you're familiar with Discord, this should look right up your alley. It should be right up your alley. So we have announcements, uh, which is where I will, if I need to ping the entire group. So you get a push notification on your phone. I'll type at channel, and then I'll type the announcement here. Uh, please check the new replit problems that were assigned. Okay, for, as an example. Um, and I can direct message individuals as well. So I can direct message you, you can direct message me and whatnot. So uh, Slack is the product that I'm gonna be using uh, that all of the faculty in our department used to communicate with our students well before uh, this uh, fantastic business of Corona started. So it's just a great product uh, that professionals use for instant messaging. So if you're here, again, you have already uh, downloaded and installed Slack and you're signed in. And as you know, that's where I'm gonna be pasting the Zoom meeting links. So I did, uh, let me hit stop share. Okay, cool, let me go back to the share. <clears throat> making sure that the recording is on for anyone who misses this. Uh, so as far as Zoom, um, when we start the Zoom meeting, the setting that I have chosen by default is to uh, mute the microphones of the participants upon entry. And it's not so much that uh, to avoid talking over one another, which I would assume if everyone's respectful, uh, in theory, that would happen as well without one another talking over each other. But it's more so uh, because d based on your system setup, you might have, uh, when you hear the, your mic picks up the sound or the feedback coming out of your speakers. And so to avoid that, it's just safest and easiest for everyone to have their mutes, their uh, microphones muted. So how you can see your microphone, if you bring your mouse to the bottom of the Zoom app, you will see, I'll hit stop share so I can do this with you. You'll see that uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, you can uh, click the microphone button to mute it. You can click the start, or if you have no video, you can hit stop video, or if you, uh, if you have no video, you can hit start video, or if you do have video, you can stop it. 
you can also click on at the bottom of your screen. You can see where it says manage, uh, well, you can see where it says participants. If everyone can click on that participants at the bottom of your screen. And when you do so, you're gonna see on the right side of your screen, a list of participants will display. So I'd like for, to be able to practice something. Uh, so if everyone can click on participants, and then on the right of the screen, you should see a list of the participants. And I would like you all to click the button, raise hand. And I'm gonna wait until everyone does that so I can see uh, that you understand how to raise your hand and don't click it a second time or your hand will go down. So we're waiting, waiting on Chloe, good, Imran and Ayub, uh, but they may have walked away. So I'll wait just a couple of seconds. Uh, but this is how you ask questions. Uh, in theory, the host of your Zoom meetings, in this case uh, for this boot camp, would be me. In theory, the host is paying attention to that. And uh, when they see a hand raised, I'll uh, either acknowledge it and I'll say, I'll wait a minute, or I'll go ahead and uh, allow you the opportunity to ask your questions. Uh, so uh, first, if we can go ahead and hit uh, the raise hand button again, which will therefore lower your hand, I believe. Uh, so make sure your hand is lowered in the list. And we have one more student participant, fantastic. And also you have, if you have not noticed already, you have the chat uh, button at the bottom of your screen, which allows you to open up a chat and then chat with the other participants. This I, in fairness, will likely not be uh, paying attention to fully. Um, I'll try to pay some attention to it, but I won't be paying attention to that fully. So really questions, unless I ask you all for answers to type, then I'll look at the chat. Otherwise, I likely won't be paying too much attention to the chat because otherwise I won't be able to focus on the content at hand. So that covers Slack, that covers Zoom. I'd like to uh, open the floor for just a few minutes uh, before we get started for questions. And uh, let's hope and let's see how many of the questions are not already answered on the website uh, or on the PDF. So uh, let's see who can manage to ask questions uh, that are not already answered. So I'll open the floor for just a couple of minutes. Uh, if you can raise your hand and so then I'll call on you and then you can ask questions. <clears throat> kind of weird to say let's ask questions and we haven't started anything but I've seen a couple, so uh, this is just an opportunity prior to getting started. Then you know what? I don't have a hand going up yet. Let's do this. I wanna call on uh, one by one. I wanna test microphones. So uh, this will take about a minute or two minutes. I'm gonna call you. If you can unmute your microphone when I call your name, say hola, say hello, uh, say whatever you like to say, and uh, then mute your microphone. So I'll start with Chloe. Hi. Hello, David. Hello, testing. Fantastic, Farha. Hello. Ibrahim. Hello. Imran. Hello. Uh, Jonathan. Hello. Justin. Hello. Coulson. Hello. Leighton. Hello. Lucas. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, I like it. Mariam. There's two Mariams. One of you go. We have M A R Y A M, Mariam. Hi. Okay. Uh, Musab. Hello. 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 Ah, and that is why we mute our microphones. <laughs> uh, feedback. Neat. Uh, I actually did have a question. Okay, we'll get we'll get that in a moment, Nate. Okay. Uh, which will be a good opportunity for you to raise your hand. So I just so I, we can practice that process for everyone to see. Uh, so Imran's raising his hand, but I'll take Nate. I'll take your question. If you can raise your hand up, Nate, so I can get to that in, mo in a moment. Uh-oh, I think I may have lost the list. Rebecca, did you go already? I don't know. Rebecca? Uh, Ridwan. Hello. Great. Yes. I'm not sure if I'm saying this correct. Is it Sayub? Hello. Hello. Sean. 
It's on Thompson. Yeah. I don't know. So say you make make sure you mute your mic each time after you're done talking. And Wajdi. Wajdi, we do not hear you. So I'll let you figure that out. Uh, Wajdi, that means that I see your microphone is unmuted. Let me go to the chat. I see someone's talking. Is that Wajdi? Mic not working. Sorry. No issue, sir. So uh, you can unmute your microphone or I'll mute it for you anyway. Very good. So we had a question from Nate. Go ahead. Unmute and go ahead. Uh, so I just wanted to know what kind of programs do you think are possible with Python? Tons. And we'll talk about that. I mean, the, the, it's, it's fully open-ended. Python is a uh, very well-known and very highly used. It's one of the most popular languages uh, currently used. So yeah. almost anything. I want to learn it for a while, but haven't had you know, the time. This helps a lot. So <clears throat> Great. Uh, someone else? Now? So thank you. So great job of lowering your hand. I know it might seem simple, uh, but I want to make sure we understand how that process works to raise and lower our hands. Uh, Imran, go ahead. You had a question? Uh, yes. Uh, what's our workspace URL? Because I want to sign in on my computer. I'm using my phone right now. Hmm. Uh, am I sharing my screen, right? Can you see this? Yes. It's python-boot-camp.slack.com. Okay, thank you so much. I'm, I'm putting it in right now. Mm -hmm. That is the workspace URL. Cool. So what I'd like to do is now that uh, 20 minutes are gone, uh, that's unfortunate, but that is important as far as just an introduction to the product and how it actually works. So let us, we probably have, this is, you know, Zoom, one, let me go ahead and uh, mention this uh, before we get started. So Zoom is a fantastic product. And uh, it's, um, maybe this is a good time to buy, for those who, who do stock market to buy Zoom stock, because uh, who knows, uh, Zoom is going to be used by, I could say a, a large percentage, maybe a majority, but certainly large percentages of institutions of higher education over the next month. And uh, it's really what's allowing them to save their synchronous learning experience. Synchronous meaning uh, the live uh, sessions as opposed to uh, simply the live face-to-face -face courses morphing into distance learning where someone uploads videos and students watch that asynchronously. Uh, so Zoom is a great product, uh, but there is a, not a negative, but just something to be aware of that at the 40 minute time point, uh, the session ends because it's for free for 40 minutes, so which is great because we probably don't want to sit here for 40 minutes straight. Uh, and it depends on what we're covering that day, but usually we'll have a little bit more time to practice some problems together. And so what I'll do is the session, I'll say, hey, let's go ahead and end the Zoom session. And uh, we'll walk away for, you know, three, four, five minutes. And then I'll paste a new Zoom link, a new Zoom session within our Slack workspace to restart the Zoom session. Because my guess is most of these days will be uh, about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 or so, uh, which really is not enough time, but we don't want to uh, oppress anyone. And you can again, work on your own additionally outside of this. Uh, so we can get started. I'm going to, uh, we have modules here on the, on the slides. I am screen sharing so you can see what I'm looking at. These are the uh, slides for our uh, boot camp. And if you click on module one, <clears throat> this pops up. Uh, I'll probably use PowerPoint or I'll, I'll stick with this for now. Why not? So I'll look at the exact same thing you're looking at. Um, and for full disclosure, these are, these are the exact same slides that I use when I'm teaching the college students. So this is the content of a college course. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you read the, there was a message that was appended to the original uh, explanation, and I'm not sure where you got the invite from, but this started uh, where 
Uh, my son, who is in the list of uh, attendees, when he was around 11 years old, I asked him if he was interested in learning programming. And he said, why not? So I taught him the college course uh, where I was at at the time, and he aced it. And uh, while he's uh, hardworking and very smart, he's a regular kid. Uh, and that's the great news of learning programming, because you don't have, there's not a lot of prerequisite knowledge required. Uh, you, if I, I can't teach someone calculus without them first having learned uh, algebra or geometry or trigonometry or pre-calculus, for example. Uh, there are prerequisites needed. But for programming, the prerequisites are, do you know how to type? Do you know how to use a computer? Are you of you know, average, above average intelligence? Then you're fine. And uh, so uh, he went on and he subsequently took uh, multiple additional courses uh, after that first programming course. And so since then, my, uh, I've been telling my daughter, who's now 12, I've been telling her that I'm going to teach you programming. And she always responded with an emphatic, no, you're not. And uh, I said, yes, or will you, I want you to learn it as well. And uh, so finally, uh, about two weeks ago, I, I basically gave her this first introduction. And uh, she, she didn't want to do it, but, but I, I kind of forced to that. And uh, then she really enjoyed it because it is fun. And uh, so I said, you know what, rather than me and you just sitting in the room together, which was great, I said, why not we uh, allow others to benefit from this as well? So um, full disclosure, this whole purpose, the whole purpose of this was originally, I'm teaching my daughter how to program, and uh, all of you are along for the ride. Uh, but you're going to be able to interrupt and ask questions. Uh, so Mariam, where are you? Say hi. Hi. Wow, that was very exciting. Hi to you. Love you. Um, so here we are on our introduction that she's sitting through for a second time. So Python Bootcamp Module 1. I'm not going to read through all of this. I would encourage you, for those who are serious, uh, I think it's pretty exciting to know that you're going to learn college-level material. Um, and you can learn it really on your own. You don't even need me for this. Uh, but what you're going to get into this is what, what you're going to get out of this is what you put into it. So I would encourage you, for those who really want to learn this, uh, take advantage of this opportunity, to read the module, to look at the schedule, um, and read the module before we actually meet. Uh, so it, it'll be like almost kind of boring when we meet, but you'll be able to ask really good questions. You maybe have done some of the problems and you'll be ahead, which is great. Uh, and some of you have already taken programming courses. This is fantastic. Uh, I know that you're going to feel the urge to flex every now and then to, to demonstrate your powerful knowledge. Uh, and that's fine. That, that, that's, I guess, somewhat natural to do so. Um, but my expectation as a starting point is that everyone in here, this is your first time learning programming. You have no idea of programming, you have no background, and this is fully a first for you. And that is the audience that I'm speaking with. So if you have knowledge, if you have a background and some experience, great. Uh, you might be bored at some points and you just have to deal with that and be patient. And um, I'll also tell you, these are a lot of disclaimers we have to get out of the way, uh, that I've modified uh, these first couple of uh, modules to remove uh, a lot of content that if we had the luxury of time, that we would go through. Uh, I would normally spend the entire first week at a website, which I highly recommend, uh, a, red, a website called code.org, which we're not going to do together. You can certainly do this on your own. My guess would be a lot of you have already seen this. Uh, maybe you can raise your hand if you have seen it. And I do see you, Wedgley, raising your hand. I'm not sure if you had a question, so I'll come to you in a moment. Um, so you can raise your hand if you've been to code.org. Uh, and I imagine a lot of you have been. So if you click on Hour of Code, and then you can pick on any one of these storylines. Somewhere in here is the original, like the classic maze. Uh, and thank you. Now you can, you can lower your hand, please, by clicking raise hand again. So you could watch these videos, and then you can go through. There's like 20 things to do in an hour. Um, and what's really impressive, truly, and I say this as a uh, college professor, what's impressive about code.org is the constructs, the paradigms that you learn in this one hour are what we teach over almost the entire semester. And it seems kind of silly, but because you can learn it in an hour, the, 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 the thought process and the things that we teach, that we teach uh, selections, which are if you have a branching operation, I can go left or right, if or else. Uh, we teach looping. Uh, and you learn all of that, the ideas, within an hour of code.org, but you're not coding 
you are using blocks. You know, if I come click way ahead to how about number 15? No, that's 13. This is probably some looping one, repeat until, and you, you, you move the block over here and you put other stuff inside. I'm not even looking at what I'm doing. I'm just dragging stuff for the moment. I could do another repeat and then you hit run and you try to solve the puzzle. And I, I can guarantee you, just, just trust the expert, you know, because I've been doing this for too many years, um, that the connections that you're making in your mind when you're solving some of the harder ones, a lot of these here at code.org are easy, but some are more difficult. And the connections, the parallels that you're making in your mind map in perfectly to the same connections that you make when you're programming. So it's just a really great product. So I would normally spend the first week here at code.org um, going through and solving problems together even at the college level because it's so valuable to build that foundation that really uh, can someone come in and maybe you've, ar you've already read it and uh, if you read ahead which is great and maybe can someone uh, unmute their mic and tell us uh, when I say uh, day one I tell my students uh, that you know computer science is two words but there's really two other words that best represents computer science and if you think you're learn you think you're here to to learn programming um, that you are maybe misguided. So can someone tell me if you've read ahead or if you know the answer, what I might be fishing for when I say that there's two words that really represents computer science instead of using the two words computer science? Um, hardware and software. That's a lot. That's not the answer I was fishing for, but I like it. Rebecca. Problem solving. Perfect. Fantastic, Rebecca. And uh, Wedgley, after we answer this, I'm going to come to Wedgley and Nate. And again, so Re Rebecca and Nate, if you were trying to answer the question, which Rebecca, you just did, you can go ahead and lower your hand unless you actually have a question. So um, absolutely, problem solving, because computer science is really all about problem solving. Now, many disciplines will say we're about problem solving as well, and I appreciate that. That's fine. Um, but computer science, it really is all about problem solving. So you'll have new students who are taking uh, their first time programming courses. and like even in this current course, I might give you all some of the homeworks that I give to the students, um, the larger ones, and uh, we're gonna have plenty of smaller assignments to do, and I'll show you how we can take care of that either today or next time. And y'all might see this message uh, as far as it says we have around 10 minutes left, and it said that three minutes ago. Um, but I'll assign y'all, if you're interested, maybe some of the larger homeworks that I give to the college students, but I won't grade them, uh, so you'll just have to if, if they work perfectly, you know, you'll know that you would have got 100. And uh, some of those might be around 1,000 lines of code, which is a lot of code. And maybe it would have taken you know, anywhere from three to six or seven hours of time to complete that assignment. And that's any first programming course. Yet if we fast forward a year and a half to a more advanced programming course, I could give a small problem, which might only require 50 lines of code, but maybe it took 10 hours to think about. So 50 lines of code, but maybe 10 hours to think about because it really is about problem solving. And there's less of that at the beginning levels because we're, we're babies. We're gonna be infants learning about programming. We're toddlers, uh, we're like babies. And so there's limited problem solving we can do, but that's really what computer science is about. Uh, Wedgdy, you had your hand up for a long time. Maybe it was on accident. I'm gonna look in the text, but if you did have a question, Wedgdy, uh, go ahead. Apologies, actually. I just wanted to see if my mic was working now. Uh, I forgot to take down my hand, but oh, it's not important. No issues. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Beautiful. So now you Thank can. You. Now you can mute your mic. Yes, I will. Perfect. So I think everyone had a chance to confirm their mic is working. So that was the disclaimers. Um, I don't even see it. Here it is. I'm looking for the remaining time. It says seven minutes. So hopefully I'll be cognizant of that. Uh, so, because otherwise this happened when I was teaching our students the other day and it just, I, w I wasn't paying attention and it just completely shut down, uh, which is fine. So if it just completely kicks us all out at the last minute, uh, no issue. You know what though, I'd like to practice one more thing. So we're not even going to start the content probably. We might just start a new session for the content and that was okay and that was part of my intention for this first day. Uh, where the first, you know, 30 minutes or so are getting our feet wet with the software, learning how it works with Zoom and testing the various uh, the functionalities of Zoom. So, you know what, let's do that for maybe two or three more minutes, uh, maybe even five, and then we'll start on this content. Uh, and so, because what's left that I want to show you all that's going to be really helpful is throughout these modules over the next several weeks, there's going to be many times where I'm going to say, okay, 
here's this problem that I'm going to present to you, and I want y'all to go solve it in groups. And if we were face to face, I'd say let's get into groups of three or four, and then go solve this, right? And how do you do that when you're all in your bedrooms, maybe in PJs and slippers or what have you, in your respective homes, maybe even countries? Uh, so I have one student who tuned in live to my session yesterday who's in Norway. Uh, she went home to Norway, and it was great. She was four hours or five hours ahead of us. So how can we do that? I will uh, show you, and no, Imran, there will be no testing on what you've learned. I saw in the chat. Uh, I will not be able to test you. You're going to test yourself. So how will you uh, do this is there's something. I'm going to hit stop share. Um, Zoom has the functionality of what is called breakout rooms. So we have five minutes left, and I think we can test this in five minutes. So we have breakout rooms. When I click breakout rooms, on my screen it pops up and it says assign the 21 participants into, and I'm going to choose five rooms of approximately, most of you will have four participants each. So now I hit create rooms, and I see, I can actually see who are the participants in each room. So I see Chloe, Ibrahim, Nate, Ryan, Sayub in one room, Imran, Maryam, Rebecca, Wajdi in another, David, Lucas, another Maryam and Ridwan in another, and so on. So you, you are all still with me in this main room. In a second, I'm going to click this open all rooms button, and you're going to get a message that will pop up and say you're being asked or requested to join this breakout room and hit OK. Uh, otherwise, you're going to leave the entire Zoom meeting. And then you're going to go into a small breakout room, say hi to one another for, you know, maybe a minute or two minutes. And um, then I will peek into each one. And when I enter the room, you'll see it is being recorded uh, because the recording follows me. Uh, so I want to practice that. I'll peek into each one of these breakout rooms because this is something that we're going to be using over the next weeks, few weeks. And I'd like to make sure that this functionality works and that we understand it. So here we go. You're going to get a message. Do join the breakout room and stay in that room until I send a message requesting that you come back to the main room. Feel free to say hi to one another. And you could also turn on your videos. I'm just, I'm gonna jump in and out of each one of these uh, rooms real quick. So pardon me. Hello all. Hello. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I'm just uh, popping in and out of each of these breakout rooms so we can test the functionality. So. See y'all. Your voice sounds like it's easier. That's pretty. That's brutal, man. So uh, you can. I don't know if that's a if that's a, a compliment or an insult, but it's okay. Wow! Did they call you out immediately, Becky? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't help that uh, Zoom already. I have it set up to where it's my whole name already. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> wow! So they just knew you were a teacher, and these aren't even your students. That's fantastic. Yeah. No, yeah, it's and one because of my I do online best. school all the time. <laughs> well, actually, no, she is a teacher. Uh, there's many of her high school students who are here participating, so she is a teacher. So it's funny that y'all knew that immediately. <laughs> anyway, I'm just popping in and out. I got one more room to pop into. Awesome. I'm homeschooled. So oh, Musab, you got to mute your microphone. Yeah, you got a lot of feedback there. So uh, just wanted to say hi, popping in and out of each of these breakout rooms. So it's always interesting uh, to see uh, how quickly the students make it back into the main session. And I'll even message in Slack. Just in case. So I think we probably have a minute or two left. So we had, I think, 21 participants.
19. We're missing one or two more. Okay, so that should be fine. And now we have 21. So great. It's always interesting, as I mentioned, to see how quickly everyone gets back to the breakout room because it does allow you 60 seconds before you are forced to leave the breakout room. So Zoom is a great product. Uh, really, it's going to salvage a lot of this learning over the remainder of the semester. Uh, what you have not even seen is uh, the ability for each of you to screen share. Uh, when you screen share, I can then annotate your screen and uh, so we can look at your code. Uh, so when we have a problem and you say, hey, my code's not working, you'll be able to share your screen. And not only can I debug your code, but others can chime in uh, and try to help you with that. So look, I, I don't even see the timer right now, but I know it's about to end. So instead of it ending abruptly, let's gracefully end this. I'll end the meeting. Uh, it's going to force all of you out of the meeting, and we'll go start the next Slack meeting uh, within, the, within, the, uh, within the Slack channel. And then we'll actually get to the content.